Welcome to the recap show. Yes, I'm Sean Katina. And if you haven't got enough of me, well, you got a half hour more uh, right now. So it's been a crazy, crazy day. Neil just highlighted the Instacart IPO. And we are very, very happy to have, of course, Brian Shannon coming to us live today. We'll talk all about his book. I'm going to ask him some fun stories. And we're going to talk trading. I mean, most importantly, that's why we're here. This show is by traders, for traders, and traders stay late. And we're gonna stay a half hour late to review the markets and talk about everything that did happen uh, today and what a wild day it was, man. I'm still looking at this Instacart. See ya, 33.80 right now. Ay, ay, ay. How did we get out there? Well, Speedy Gonzalez there. How did we get out at 37, Sean? Come on, man. Uh, but that's all right. Good, good day today, regardless for us on Instacart. Bad first trade on the IPO. Its best time was its first time here. Let's go over to cart just real quickly just to see what's, whoa, that's right, we don't need the daily on there. That doesn't make any sense. Let's go to a one minute real quick, see what happened on Instacart here right off the open. Um, huge, oh yeah, that's right, I got it. Come on, wheel, let's go wheel. It's not in my wheelhouse right now. Uh, it's not wheeling and dealing here, so we'll have to figure that out. But Instacart, nice move upside there today. Come on, Instacart. All right, hold on a second. Let me put this to a five minute chart real quick here. For some reason, it won't go back uh, anymore. So I, we'll have to talk to Michael Noss about that real quick. But let's just quickly go over this while we still have our sanity. Um, dailies right now on the movement. All right, big day here today for the market. But we actually held pretty steady awaiting what is coming tomorrow at 2 o'clock where we have the FOMC. But again, it's a 99 percentile that we're looking for a flat pause, right? So you're going to keep the interest rates where they are. Then we'll hear what uh, Jerome Powell has to say. And all they've been is data dependent, right? So if they're going to continue to be that way, then we will still continue to look at um, CPI, PPI, employment numbers. And we'll continue to see if those come out hot and give us pause uh, for concern and potentially a downside drift in 2024. That's what we're all looking at uh, here again. So there's Instacart. We'll, I'll, I'll figure out what's going on with this, uh, with this wheel here spinning it. We got a lot of questions today about Enphase. Enphase was actually on one today, wasn't it? Uh, Enphase today up four and a half percent. Yeah, nice move for Enphase today. And again, maybe I can zoom back in a little bit on this one. Oh, now it's going, okay. I don't know what's happening. But right there, this bottom of 113, 114, that's been pretty good there for Enphase. Nice move up. You see where we were today on a one minute chart for this name? It was a nice move down, but we did hold that 120 area. So Again, there it is. Okay, there we go. We got the zoom working now. There's that 118, right? That's been a great little level down there into the teens for end phase. Nice move back to the upside today as we watch out for the TAN ETF. Look, UNG, whatever, man. I mean, we always talk about this. It always has decent moves every single day. So we'll pass on talking about UNG. But what I do not want to pass on is what happened down here. OIH and my boy XLE. So we've taken, we've been pretty patient with getting out of XLE. We actually haven't gotten out of anything at all. Maybe this is something I can talk to Brian about. Where, that, where am I supposed to anchor this VWAP? Because uh, XLE right here near highs, and we did not get anything out. So I'm thinking that maybe we should rotate. We've, we've had a huge move. Neil in my ear saying, hold it. He likes the energy space. So do I. Um, there's no doubt about that. But I just feel like in a possible move down over the next couple of days, based on what, what, what Powell says, it, let's just say um, he's talking relatively dovish about the market. Well, I could see then oil pulling back down as maybe a safety trade there. People hiding out in oil, switching out of energy into equities. So that could be something that happens there tomorrow. I think we'll stick with our guns a little bit and get out of about 20% of XLE tomorrow, but we'll watch out for that. OIH as well. Um, so again, United, this is the oil services ETF. So looking at names like Valero and whatnot, Valero has been hot fire as well. Although I think Valero gave some back today, guys. Let's have a quick look at that. Yeah, see Valero down 2.5% today, just banging its head off the top again. So if you are in some of these energy names, shout out to Michael Noss, who's come up with a Valero trade for us. That was a good one, breaking through 140, but there you go, topping out at that 148, the past high that goes all the way back to January. And then, of course, uh oh, watch out for the SMH. We talked about this before. If the SMH loses this bid down here at, four, at the 140, then you're gonna have to say good night because I feel like Nvidia helped us get to where we are, man. The NASDAQ up 41% year to date. Why is that? Well, Nvidia was at its high, and we'll find out what it's on. Um, 
I guess this should have year to date here somewhere uh, on this. I'll, I'll get that later. But uh, NVIDIA this year was up over 300%. And you could see starting to pull back in again uh, right now on NVIDIA. No, they do not have earnings uh, anytime soon. But there it is right there. If we lose four bills on NVIDIA, man, I, uh, that, that's going to be a fun ride to the downside. Let's do this early because I, I'm, I'm here for the people. Oh, Stream Deck is not open over here. Can you hit roll call over there as I open up the Stream Deck because we do not want to miss out on this one. Uh, refresh the topics. Uh, no, that should be okay. Instacart, IPO, earnings, Stitch Fix, that's fine. The only thing we don't have on there is that we're going to have trade talk. Okay, so if you, I mean, if you guys want to, I got to go over there and do it um, or send me the link and I can do it over here. But let's quickly do roll call because look, as I said, man, real traders stay late. We're going to review a couple different things. We do have trade talk with Brian Shannon, which I kind of should fix that actually. Um, now, now, that I, now that I see that, if you guys have the link, maybe it could get sent over here or I got to go run to my, or go do it on my desk. It's on one of the tabs uh, right there. So who's here? Yo, yo, what's up, Mud? What's up, Comp SRX1? Chimps is up in here. It's like the third or fourth tab on the top, or, or Brendan can do it too. I just wanna put Trade Talk on the rundown. Um, just maybe push cart down or something or get rid of that trade review. Yo, yo, what's up, David? What's up, Intergalactic? What's up, Craig? And as I said, man, we are doing this live, and that is my mistake. I do want to put it on there because we do have Brian Shannon coming on. Hey, Reliable Rudy, here's my guy on end phase. Hey, look, Reliable Rudy, how about this? You tweeted at me. Um, it's, yeah, it's like the third or fourth tab there uh, on the top. I like end phase long, but Reliable Rudy, can you do this? If you're on Twitter, send me a DM with the be base case scenario there for end phase, and I'll discuss it, and I'll, I'll do some research on end phase as well. So let's do that, because you know what, guys? I really like end phase right there. What's up to my wife? She always says she's in the chat, and then I kind of, she doesn't really give me, you know what, for not mentioning her, because I don't see her during this show, because we're on fire here, and we're trying to go fast uh, for everybody. But there's why we like end phase. Look at this stock just dripping down, man. Um, and now trying to find a base. And actually, um, if we go to a weekly chart, you're running into some great levels. Maybe I'll talk to Brian about this one right now as well. Um, are you guys able to find it? If not... Okay, good, good, good. Uh, right there, so end phase dripping down. Maybe we'll talk to Brian a little bit about this one because I do like this name. All right, quickly on to market recap again. SPY and NQ both basically flat on the day, both down about 0.2 as we wait for more, 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 and it's coming tomorrow. It's actually really funny because Brian actually had a tweet the other day. I should talk to him about this. He said, oh, before employment data, we were all like, oh my God, we gotta wait for employment data, see what happens. Then employment data comes out, then the next rhetoric is, oh my God, we gotta wait for FOMC, and that's coming out tomorrow. So get ready to make your decisions on long-term trades coming out very, very soon. Probably tomorrow, you'll get to hear from the Fed. Ah, water. Uh, people ask about that. It is, of course, water. I mean, what, what else am I going to be drinking at this time, guys? I mean, come on. Uh, let's be real on that one. All right, check the Benzinga Newswire because we don't have anything without Benzinga. And, of course, there is nothing reporting here uh, tonight. There it is. B. Shannon. Thank you, Brendo and Fabian, uh, for getting that going. Uh, but here we go. Nothing tonight, man. So why we wrote down Stitch Fix on there, let's just go over to the next topic real quick because we don't want to wait for too long for our special guest today. Uh, but Stitch Fix yesterday, not a great report. And not great action today. Wrong if you said that, because today Stitch Fix up 12% um, on what was a miss yesterday. But again, nice little move there for Stitch Fix, bringing it back to the upside. We talked about this, the short float. Stitch Fix has a 12% short float. So here we go. Kind of a bit, whoopsies, kind of a big you know what candle here. No, no, go the other way. Go the other way. Go the other way. Zoom the other way. Right, I digress. Let's just load that back up again here for Stitch Fix to the daily charts. I don't know, it's not zooming in the other way, right? but right there it is. Nice move from that bottom 280. And we actually talked about that yesterday. If you did get that wick bottom, look for an extension top. So now on Stitch Fix, we'll look for it to break out through here, 450. I know that sounds crazy, but 342, another dollar move, we can get to that. Watch out for a 450 break there on Stitch Fix. Again, you know, negative EPS, so they're not making money. You don't want to buy stock right now of a company that's quite frankly not making money cash is still expensive you know fed is halting rates not raising but they're also not lowering 
So let's not forget about cost of capital, still at that 500 basis point move in a year, gonna kill people, and especially Stitch Fix, that needs that capital, it's a nice move down. But that's the only earnings play that we had, Stitch Fix. Let's keep that in our mind, because remember a firm, their report, although it was better than Stitch Fix, not great. Look at this bump off the 200 period for a firm. Nice move back to the upside on that one. So let's go over uh, right now. It's not quite time. We are have Brian. I see that he's getting locked and loaded right now. So once we're ready, we'll go over to our special guest of the day. But let's just check out Cart real quick, man. So here's Instacart. Wow. I mean, if you thought I was an algo before, then what are you thinking about today? Like all of these fills getting out of the long early on, on Instacart, but it didn't really matter too much because it just got faded the rest of the way. My initial play, and we'll talk about this, so I'm sort of skipping over and we'll talk about IPO trades uh, maybe after, but maybe not. This is the long. We take the long on IPO open for Instacart, right? But let me just zoom in a little bit more so we can look at this even closer. So here's the fill. We got about four or five outs on the way up, but then once it cranked below, the fill was at 40, the, the Instacart initial push, 42 flat was the, the IPO price that everybody on the street got that's currently trading. Day traders, um, anybody that was not filled um, on the first push of 31 bucks, the IPO pricing, you had to buy it on open today, right? So there's the 42 fill, and there's me getting out at 41.50. I'm never gonna hold this too far below the IPO price, and this is why, rinse city. Right? We're able to buy the long back when we took it, and then we made good money back right there. Good money, good money, until eventually it broke. And now I feel like that movie, Dumb Money, because we just kept on buying it. But then guess what? Then pay dirt hit, right? Because then all of a sudden, this short started to print through at 40 bucks. The minute we took 40 and we started seeing that there was a potential top right there, we got stopped at once, but then we got right back in, breaking lower, 50 period break. But then guess what? We opened up the arm IPO. And when we saw that that got going at three o'clock, I sort of said to myself, and I said it to everyone live as well, and we put this to the Twitterverse, right? I don't have a problem getting out and sharing my trades with everybody because we're real traders here on Trader TV Live. And if I'm gonna get out right there, that's what we did. We actually tested the long, it didn't work before the flush happened. So I thought a break of the 50 period could have meant something. Turns out that it doesn't mean that much at all. And if you're gonna look right here, thank you so much for everybody. I'm watching all the chats. Birds went up to two bucks, is that actually true? Uh, BRDS, we saw this fly through. Okay, no it didn't, okay. Um, so BRDS right now up to 150. And remember, our servers will shut off about now. So if there is any trading after market, I'm gonna have to call up trade ideas uh, to find out what's going on with that. But right now, yeah, BRDS. And hey, look, if you're trading halting names and you wanna get updated prices, uptraded theoretical auction prices, things like that, I had this up at 109. And I was ho-humming it, because I was like, ah, what do we want to do, what do we want to do? I could take it at 109, give it down to a buck, about 10% worth of risk, give it to that dollar break back lower, and man, that would have paid off uh, if we would have held that. But realistically, where would it got out? Probably in here about the 30s. Let's look at birds. There's that $2 mark, if we can come over to the screen, uh, Ramin, just quickly here. Here's $2 on BRDS. So I would say look out for that as a possible high take coming through. Um, and then another stock that we could talk about quickly today was Intel, that name on the Intel Innovations. That came through today, and man, I don't know what they were talking about. We'll find out more tonight. Um, Brennan was talking about it a little bit. I just, don't, I just think it was underwhelming. I think everybody's waiting for alchemists. They're waiting for some new ideas. Remember, this continues into tomorrow as well, but today, Intel rinsed down pretty nicely, man. And if you're looking at the charts again, um, this 37.50, like that was the level on the deal. Are we ready with Brian? Not yet, okay, so we'll wait for him uh, to come through. But there's 37.50, looking for a nice downside move there on Intel. And if you waited for the daily, you got a nice break below right there on that. So down to 36 and change uh, coming through. So, all right, it looks like we are getting close uh, to have Brian on, and we're excited to have him on right now. So um, that's about everything that we want to talk about real quick. Um, we also had another big trade, and if everybody was wondering about um, what we're talking about sometimes here uh, live on air, I always talk about the sticky notes. So, um, you know, we posted this up here today. When we saw that NIO had to, again, raise more money, 
This was a trade here today that we really talked about it. There's NIO, short 965, right? That turned out to be exactly, and here it is right here, 965, a note offering. We'll see it sub 10 bucks. We wanted to get more short if it did test $10 on NIO, but that didn't come through at all. So here it is right now. Let's go over to NIO and just talk a little bit about the trade that we had as Brian's getting all locked and loaded over there. Um, there's the trade. So we take this at 845 because it broke back down below that 965 right there and that's the trigger. So once we got 965, we took a little bit of shares, then we realized, hey man, we don't have enough. Like what are we scared of? If it breaks $10, it's a 35 cent hit. So that for us is no problem. The only fear about taking a trade in the pre-market are those market on open orders that could definitely affect the initial balance of the stock. So you can be rinsed on that one too the wrong way only to realize that you're right. But we noticed that 965 probably wasn't in too much danger right there. We didn't really see $10. We had a couple dark pool prints up there near that $10 mark, but look at the fade down. There's a nine take. These outs are all like 930s, 920s, you could see. And then we finally, the longest held trade in Trader TV Live history. See, I say that with authority because maybe you guys might believe that. Now, I don't know that to be true, but getting in at 845 and getting out at 850 or at uh, 355 probably wins right there. It's a full day plus a half hour plus 45 more minutes. So that's a big hold for us all the way down. But you know what, guys? We didn't have thousands of shares on this trade. Maybe initially, but not at the end, or we would have started to get some out all the way. We had a small piece. We just wanted to get that closing trade to see where Neo landed. And today it lands at 850. So we'll have to check out at the end of the day, uh, tomorrow possibly, what is happening with all of that. So hopefully NIO does make a move back in tomorrow. And if it does, we'll be there to short it again, probably around that $9 mark. We'll have to watch out for some VWAP. So again, thank you so much for everybody joining. I see, oh, Streamlabs. Uh, what's up, Jacob right there? He goes rocket, rocket, rocket uh, to put it through. Bang on that one. Nice one right there. Um, all right. See you, Matt. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, man. Uh, 100, 100, 100 on that one. Before you go anywhere, though, make sure you do hit the like and the subscribe. We have over 2,000 people watching uh, as we speak, and uh, it's going to be a good show. Believe me, it already is right now. There it is right now. 2,000 people watching. Whoa. Oh, your boy's number 200, man. We just hit the like right there on the stream. Now 201. Let's see if we can get this to 250 uh, right now real quick. Over 2,000 watching. Thank you so much for supporting the show as we go. Um, one trade at the end of the day, we got out just for fun there on Tesla. I really like Tesla. I think Tesla is one of those names that we just continue to buy on dips, man. I really like Tesla. Now, I don't know about as a day trade, but right here, right now, there's the take that we, we, we let Tesla, look, we left it alone. This tends to happen all the time right off the gate, right? It jumps out, 264 bottom right there, huge move up to 268. But look, man, as the mighty falls, we had a nice fall down into 261. And look at this. This is a 20-minute chart over here. 260, 261 has been the bottom all the way back a couple weeks, okay? So if you even wanted to, you could set your anchored VWAP if you have that right here at this bottom, which was the gap fill higher into 260, 261, and then now you see where we're gonna land out at, but that's a nice little bottom pick right there at 260. For me, again, nothing too important here. We waited, we saw this base out, we take this break again um, on uh, Tesla, nice upside move, we take 50 cents, we get out for, I guess it was, I guess it was a 15 cent hit there as we were getting a little nervous on that break back through. So that's 20%, 20%, 20, 20, 20 to the upside. And there's that funny out that we got out at 266.66 uh, as that falls through. I guess we're, we're having what, audio problems or? Okay, the mic on Brian not uh, working right now, but we'll get it to work. This guy, this guy does, um, you know, he does podcasts and all that all the time. So uh, we'll be able to get that fig figured out. But real, real, real quick, because um, again, we're doing some roll call. We've done that over and over again. We can't thank everybody enough for joining us here. And again, we've talked about some sector recaps. I'm looking to see here if there's anything popping in the aftermarket right now. So a firm showing up here right now. I don't really see too much happening on a firm. 23 and change on that one. What else popping up? 
TSHA, nothing really, SMG, Scott's miracle grow, what? That was down 6%, okay, so maybe this is on earnings. Huge move to the downside right now for Scott's, down 6%, not, not now, but on the day, SMG getting hit there. And again, I think Scott, this is Scott's miracle grow, yes it is. I actually think, let me call up our other trade, our other idea here. You wanna get a trade idea? Let's do this right now. I think SMG, Okay, so Scott's Miracle Grow is also a cannabis play. All right, so this is gonna be a little one of those undercover cannabis plays. And if we actually go to a weekly chart, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Look at this, man. Definitely has a lot of potential to go back up to the upside. This is in 2021, when a lot of these stocks mooned a little bit there. 256 for SMG. Look where we are right now. Like that's a pretty big move to the downside. Now, why is Scott's Miracle Grow a possible cannabis play? Again, it's a play because you are going to at some point be able to grow your own. Now, I know there's a lot of states that have that. This is a very good product there. Scott's Miracle Grow also has some other uses other than growing weed, uh, of course. But look at this down near the bottom. I'm gonna put this one in my cap and think about it because I do like SMG, never been able to get into it. Another one with a high running possibility. But look, we cranked below the 50 period and well off the 200 today as well. A trade that we had that was pretty successful, what about Square today? News about Jack Dorsey, newly appointed CEO, stepping down. So we do have Square today making a move back down. Okay, good. Making a move back down into the downside. Square, we'll have a look out for those guys at some point. But hey, we're ready. We're locked and loaded. This is one of my favorite uh, bumpers to go. So let's do this right now. It's trade talk. So, um, okay, praise this. Oh, oh, you caught me there. What's up, Brian? How's it going? I've already read the book, uh, but thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you for working through some of those audio issues. How are you? Your first time on the recap show. Uh oh. I don't hear. Uh oh, are you on mute? You could possibly be on mute. Is that possible uh, from your end there, Brian? All right, we'll work on that. Oh. You think I've never done this before. There we go. We've got him. Okay. So, hi, Brian. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I think we're all good to go. So, once again, how was your day? And, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Sean. Uh, my day was pretty slow. You know, I have, as I get older, I am less of a day trader than I used to be. I, right. can't, I, I can't believe how active you are and being able to broadcast it and uh, do such a good job explaining what you do uh, all the time live like that. Um, so, I, you know, I have a couple swing trades, uh, one that I'm still in a little bit. I got stopped out of a short in FSLR, uh, took a small loss in Yeti, and I've got a little bit of this stock ACGL. So pretty quiet day for me. Okay. Is that, is that and, and again, Brian, like, this is not about, like, you know, our hair. Like, you talked about getting older and having too much stress. Like, I don't know if you've always... Uh, had your, you know, a hair problem, like me, I'm losing my hair. There you go, put the hat on. Like I noticed that as I get older, and it's funny, and thank you for the praise about the show, um, but I'm feeling like, yeah, holding on for something a little bit longer tends to be a little bit of a more profitable trade. And that's where I'm actually using your Anchor VWAP more and more on the show. So I wanna say thank you to that. Are there any trade setups, Brian, that maybe you want to review with some people, uh, some traders here? Because everyone's super excited to have you on. And quite frankly, so am I. Yeah. You know, last night I posted a, a brief video about how a lot of these stocks are, you know, they're in great uptrends on the daily time frame. And they look like the type of stock that I want to buy. Right. But unfortunately, they're just not there on the shorter term time frame. So, you know, if we look at, there's your SMG. I was just looking at that as you spoke about it. Yeah. Um, shoot, where the heck did my list go? Um, anyway, stocks like uh, Guess Jeans, for instance, was one of them. Okay. And Guess Jeans, if you look at, you know, for instance, a weekly time frame, this is the type of stock that is supposed to, you know, break in. So this goes back to 2021 right here. And we've got this long-term base. It just recently, you know, broke out higher on some earnings and then it's pulling back, but it's pulling back, pulling back and pulling back, which is why I never buy the dip. So I like to look at two time frames side by side. On All the right. left, we have that daily time frame and people buy at the 20 day moving average or they might buy at the anchored VWAP. But I look at those as levels of interest. And as long as we're still pulling back over here on the right, this is a 30 minute time frame. 
Right. So on over here on the 30 minute time frame, it's still just a very clear pattern of lower highs and lower lows. Now, you're the type of guy I think who's going to look at a stock like this and say, well, why don't you short it? Right. And when it comes to what I do, it's about trend alignment. So I want to see, you know, a nice uptrend developing on the daily time frame that might be able to sustain a longer term move higher. But I want to wait until we see something instead of something like this where we go, you know, and start to turn sideways. And then I want to be a buyer, for instance, right here yeah. as yep. the momentum turns back higher. This orange line is my five-day moving average. And that is really my best near-term indicator for swing trade. So if it's got a declining five-day moving average, I'm simply not interested in it for a swing trade. So for instance, the SPY today, I had a, a, a negative bias because that orange five-day moving average is declining. So, you know, my better trade in the SPY today was right off the open. I shorted it right in here. Okay. I didn't set my stop, fortunately, so I didn't get stopped out there, but covered some quickly and then down into here. So, you know, that's the way I'm looking at things these days is let's get this Fed out of the way and maybe some of these setups that look like they're potentially yep. set up start to do what they're supposed to do. Yeah, Brian, I actually saw you tweet something the other day and I thought it was actually pretty genius because it's something that we deal with every single day. And you said like, the rhetoric was like, uh-oh, we have to, we can't make any trades until we see the unemployment number, then the CPI number, and then now we have to sit on our hands until we get fed, you know? So at some point, you got to look at the technicals and try to figure out what play you're trying to make. So I really like that um, kind of patience, and thank you for sharing. Your, was that a five-day simple moving average? Uh, that Correct, you yeah, yeah. And, and just real quick for your, for your viewers there who might be confused. They might go put a five period moving average, say, for instance, on a 10 minute time frame. OK. And it's going to look nothing like this. Over the course of five days, the market's open for one thousand nine hundred fifty minutes. It's three, not three hundred ninety minutes in a day. Right. Times five is one thousand nine fifty. So if I'm looking at this 10 minute time frame, I'm looking at a one hundred ninety five period. OK. One thousand nine hundred fifty uh, minutes. Perfect. Well, I'm glad we discussed that because, yeah, probably some of our guys tomorrow will be like, wait a second, this is not a good indicator. But, um, okay, thank you for doing that. Now, just real quick because we are running out of time. The problem is, Brian, I talk a lot. You probably watched the show and you might notice that. So we do have a gun to our head here uh, for 430, which we're running it, but we'll extend it. Um, what is your opinion uh, for traders that are looking to maybe potentially buy the dip right now? You just had the SPY up. Do you mind maybe doing a quick little um, talk about that? I'm expecting the market to maybe flush a little bit tomorrow. I, I, I kind of think that Powell will be a little more hawkish than dovish. Talk maybe about the energy sector and that eyes have to be on that. And then if oil does breach that $100 mark, maybe they raise one more time coming in November. I don't know, but I could see that happening. Maybe is there a level potentially on either the SPY or the NASDAQ? You maybe make a pick there because I have some money on the sidelines right now. I'm actually exiting some of the, the energy that I have right now and just waiting on cash, looking for a lower entry. Is anything catching your eye for a potential maybe couple month trade, something like that, where we're looking to maybe start to build a position? Any key levels you're looking at? Yeah, not right here right now, Sean. I, again, if, we, if we're below that declining five-day moving average, it's my opinion, you just don't buy it. Don't okay. buy the dip. Buy strength after the dip. Right. So, for instance, not buying this dip over here, but instead getting long over here for the swing trade when it makes, you know, when we start to see that five-day moving average turn higher. Now we have it turning lower. So we've got to back it up to the daily time frame and say, what are some key levels? The most important level from the perspective of if you want to buy the dip, I think the level of interest where you want to look to do that is right here. And that's the anchored volume weighted average price from this April low. I'll just uh, color it pink yep. to differ differentiate it. So that you can see was tested and bounced significantly uh, last month. Now, I think that because we're stuck below the 20 day moving average, below the 50 day moving average, that 50, this is 50 days ago. This is 40, uh, 51, 52, 53. So we're going to get rid of those four days in the 50 day moving average calculation. That means this 50 day moving average, the right. blue line is going to start to turn lower. And then we're going to get rid of this data, which will turn the 20 day moving average low as well. Yeah, yeah. So I think there's a pretty good chance we're going to come down at least to this level. If that fails to hold, 
then we've got to look at the anchored volume weighted average price from the March low. Oh, no. And then we don't want to talk about it because then we're in a more serious thing and we should have been talking about what stocks should we have been shorting. Yeah, you know what? I actually want to end this conversation right now because I don't want to talk about March lows. Now I'm getting a little bit of some heart palpitations right now. But uh, no, that, that's what it's all about. And that's one thing from your book actually as well, Brian, that I learned and that is, is that you don't necessarily want to play a falling knife into VWAP. You want to make sure that you play strength off of key levels, not necessarily trying to catch them as we're falling through because support could turn into resistance real quick and vice versa. So, hey, look, I had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for all of your patience today. And I want to make sure that all the viewers can go to at alpha trends make sure to check you out over there i'm sure you have lots of information they can join anything they want watch you live it's brian chen and i want to say thank you so much again for the kind words and for all the knowledge and promise me we'll do this again well, all right see you next week sean thanks next I'll, week i'll have all my tech figured out too i like it thank you so much that's trader talk my favorite segment brian chen ciao You see, that's how we're doing it. We're slipping it in there. Now you got next week commitment from Mr. Brian Chen. And I'm really, again, I, I'm, I'm just proud that we started this show. Well, first of all, we started this show a month ago, but we started Trader TV Live a couple years ago. And now we're able to bring you, you know, honestly, such great guests like Brian, Michael Noss, Daniel Shea, Crate, like all of these amazing guests. Um, and shout out uh, to every single person that's joined us here on the show. And just not only on this show as well, and Chris Brecher, um, but on our main show as well. We had Frank today, Frank Caberna. And we're not going to stop. And I'm really, really proud of what we've been able to develop. But we could do none of this. Absolutely none of this. My wife said I should get a haircut today, so I'm going to probably go get one after this. Um, see, that my mind is always everywhere. We'd have none of this unless we had all of you. So shout out to Roll Call. Let's just go over to this camera if we can right now. And I will quickly call over everybody right now. Thank you so much to Fan Funding. Thank you so much to Bears vs. Bulls. And here it is right now. The Super Chats from today, man. Vadzim, Larry Summers, Tim, uh, Deary, The Hayes Records, uh, Jorge, thank you so much, or George, uh, Max, Giro, Gyro coming through and Robert there's an easy name Robert and Max thank you so much uh, for everything and then a big shout out to everybody that's here right now yeah you're right uh, Garv thank you so much Brian um, thank you so much, Michael Noss, as well, for hooking us up uh, all the time. There's my guy right there. Thanks, Michael, for being in the chat. I mean, that, that's great. Dan, Rob, everybody that's there, Dees, everybody that's here, the Warthog, Doctor Strange. This is what we're doing. Thank you, Kat. See you later, Kat. And there's another member of our team, man. Maybe we'll have Miss Kat on here one day, talk all about, you know what we could do? Well, let's find what, what stocks she likes. You, you like a stock? Yell one out. Newell Brands? I, don't, I, don't, I didn't hear her, but I don't think she... Oh, Google. <laughs> Newell Brands. What the hell? I don't, how the hell would Kat know about that stock? But she said Google. Okay, Google, one of my favorites as well. Yo, 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 Ponzi, Fonzie. All right, man, let's end this show with a bang. Thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, thank you to my guest, Brian Chan, and thank you to Michael Noss for being in the chat there. Um, and thank you to everybody else who's in the chat. We're gonna continue to do this every single day. Um, we've got the experience, we've got the tech, we've got the guests, we've got everybody, and this has been The Recap Show. I'm Sean Katina, and I'll check you on the flip side tomorrow at 8.30. Ciao.